Several years back, two young men set out to write, direct, and produce their own short film, no longer than five minutes, for a school-sponsored project. Like most creative types, they had their share of bumps in the road. But was it their tight budget, lack of support, or just their own incompetence? I got a chance to sit down with the young visionaries and attempt to answer the questions so many seem to be asking. Many people have labeled you two anywhere from overly ambitious to borderline status, all from one school project. How would a pair of students like yourselves acquire such radical titles? We had set out to make a serious commentary on the state of the human condition. It's a very dynamic script that we felt captured every moral and idea that we could work in. I have a statement from another young filmmaker documenting your film saying the two of you were nothing short of hellraisers. Art is not always as pretty as we'd like it to be, Miss... Adams. Adams. Do you expect Van Gogh to apologize for the paint he spilled during the process of Starry Night? We have here some footage your documentarian was able to film from your spilt paint. Let's take a look, shall we? I don't know, there's some fuzziness in it? You might want to check your connectors. Oh. But take with oh. Are you f***ing filming this? Turn the camera off! Get him! Well? The project had a rough start, I'll give you that. You lost two members of your crew in the first week. They signed the consent forms, and those families were graciously compensated. With a $50 gift card to Outback and a fruit bouquet. To share? As with most independent projects, we were operating under a tight budget. One of your fellow students, Gary, claimed that you were two of the worst individuals and most wasteful uses of oxygen he had ever met in his entire life. I would say Gary may not have been ready to achieve on the level that we really wanted to, and when you're working in tense, dramatic environments, you really need to hold yourself together. Yeah, well, Gary was a peculiar case in the sense that, well, it almost seemed like he intended to hold production back at times. But you I see, like, I like I like that shot. It's a nice angle, you know. Yeah, yeah, it really it came in there nice. Yeah, yeah. You, you see, it's really simple. You just got you pull the the bird back, and you let it go, and that's how you get three stars. So you want to get all the pigs? You got to hit all the pigs down. Okay, hey, Mr. Glade, go. I got your soda. Well, about time. This diet? Damn it, Gary! Okay, that was one time. We have another clip. Now, you're gonna be staring passionately off in the distance. All right, everyone ready? We all good? All right, go with the raccoon. What? Don't worry about it. Mr. McDonald, the, the coon guy called. He said that he wasn't coming in today. When were you planning on telling me this? I told, you, I told you an hour ago. Don't you remember? Damn it, Gary! You had one job! And don't tell me what I do and don't remember! Get back here, Gary! Again. One time. Donnie, roll the clip. Such a jerk. You're so god damn it. Ah! Oh my god! <laughs> God damn it, Gary! And bite the curb! <sighs> Finally away from those balls. <laughs> you, Gary! <laughs> Before the productions of The Passions of the Cantaloupe, the town of St. Olaf once stood proud and humble. This field and a small chair are now all that remain. What do you have to say about St. Olaf? They signed the consent forms. Those families were generously compensated. You bought them a single day pass to Coney Island Amusement Park. To share. Again, budget. You destroyed a town. We put those fires out ourselves. Do the two of you have some sort of finished product to prove or in some ludicrous way justify what you've done? Production did come to a bit of a standstill. We were given a time limit on the film. Which we tried to follow, but I mean, who can tell a decent story in five minutes? 